Hey everybody, John from Movie Burners here, back with another movie review and today I'm going to be discussing the 2005 release Sophie Shaw, The Final Days. Now I've mentioned on many an occasion that I am a massive World War II buff. I like to think I'm reasonably knowledgeable on the subject and I've certainly seen some amazing visceral films focusing on the two distinctive theatres of conflict and also the myriad of different battles within. We've also seen the more quieter reflective dramas in this movie subgenre. Downfall in particular was a, a standout and it was an unbelievable introspective look into the Führer bunker during Hitler's final moments. And you know what, Sophie Shaw, The Final Days is very much in the same mould and vein as that modern classic. It's essentially about a young 21 year old woman who was a student member of the White Rose, an anti-war resistance group that distributed leaflets around southern Germany between late 1942 and early 1943. When the film opens, the group has already been busy in distributing these around the major cities, and Mark Rothmund chooses to focus on the fateful six attempt at the University of Munich. This is based on a true story, incidentally. The events that occur in this film actually happened, despite the ridiculousness and insanity of what unfolds afterwards. As far as I'm aware, this is a very historically accurate film too. It opens on Sophie, played by Julia Gents, singing playfully along with her friend before she slips out into the night and meets her fellow White Rose members and hide out to conspire against the tyranny of the Third Reich. This stark change in persona early on is very deliberate and you can understand why this young lady managed to evade suspicion for such a long time. Nobody would have suspected this young person of committing any nefarious, treasonous deeds. The plans to walk into the University of Munich in the middle of the afternoon are then laid out and despite warnings from the others about the Gestapo waiting in the wings for them, they decide to go ahead with a risky plan anyway. Sophie and her older brother Hans, played by Fabian Heinrichs, have the briefest of sombre moments alone in their apartment before they head out to the university the very next day, packed briefcases in hand to distribute the leaflets. The fraught anxiety and panic that must have permitted there and the minds of these two young people on the actual day is perfectly captured in the scene that falls. It's full of tension and you're willing them both to succeed and escape despite knowing they'll ultimately be caught. The person responsible for their capture, ironically, isn't a member of the infamous Gestapo but instead a sycophantic little weed of a janitor. He's an ordinary man. This is a mere setup, of course, for the true intention of this film though, which is to focus on the harrowing four days of interrogation and battle of wills between the young woman and her rabid Nazi captors. This is a character driven, extremely dialogue heavy film and the overwhelming majority of the dialogue takes place between both Sophie and Robert Moore, played by Gerald Alexander Held, the man who is charged with investigating her. Now I say investigating but in truth it's more like a psychological game of chess in earlier moments between the pair. Moore knows full well that she's responsible but Sophie excellently dances around his determined probes time and again, always seeming to have an answer or explanation for every scenario that he puts forward. In the end though, it's a small throwaway detail in the apartment seen earlier involving stamps that proves to be her undoing. That and her brother providing a full admission of course. But these exchanges between the two that took up a large chunk of the middle act of this film were utterly mesmerising for me, I couldn't take my eyes off the screen which was all the more remarkable given it is entirely in German this film. Now one thing that always struck me about films set in World War 2 and indeed the stories that helped inspire them was just how young some of the central players were. The likes of the legendary Dick Winters preparing Easy Company in the Allied counter assault in France during his mid-twenties and in this film it's much the same. This was just a 21 year old woman displaying a courage and a steadfast conviction in her beliefs in the midst of a truly horrific situation that frankly would have put the overwhelming majority of my generation to shame. Sophie Shaw's unwavering spirit and determination is what I really took away from this film and I forget the feeling that was the intended takeaway. She's a heroic figure in Germany even to this day and it doesn't even try to flesh out the other main players like her brother Hans or the Christoph Plobs character played by Florine Stetter. The perspective does flip back and forth between Sophie's interrogation and her chats with Moore and also her spending time in the cells with Elsa played by Johanna Gastorf who was a fellow political prisoner and communist. Elsa gives the impression that she has seen this situation play out numerous times before and she does her best to try and convince her young cellmate 
to cooperate with the Nazis and perhaps live to see another day, but that was never likely to be the way that things would turn out for a young protagonist. Armed with her faith, something she is seen turning to again and again, she refuses to out her fellow White Rose members for a more lenient punishment. Her eloquence and dogged determination that she's right even leaves the pro-national socialist interrogator more shaken. It often feels like Ma is looking to manufacture a way out of the horrible predicament for her, and there's more than a hint of sympathy and sorrow within his character. He mentions having a young boy of a similar age to Sophie fighting on the Eastern Front, which probably explains his desire to see her get off with it. Now on to the final part of the film, it zips along very speedily indeed, with Sophie, Hans and Christoph being brought up in front of the infamous Roland Freisler, played by Andre Heineke, a man named Hitler's blood judge. There's nothing earth shattering revealed during any of the court scenes, but like before it was a fascinating watch and insight into the sham that was the People's Court of Germany. Freisler was famous for his hysterical shouting and the shaming of the accused brought up before him, and the film does a fantastic job of recreating that whilst also reaffirming the defiance of the young conspirers. There's a short emotional respite with her parents and then all of them are promptly executed, and you know what, I thought the way that Rothman approached the scene was incredible. Now for performances, I mentioned previously that this is a Sophie Shaw biographic and therefore it's only fitting really that the young woman playing her is the standout. Julia Gents wasn't a name I was aware of prior to seeing this film but I have to say she was fantastic as the title of character. Even the resemblance between her and the real Shaw was eerie and she conveyed a whole range of emotions as she went through a living hell. Gerald Alexander Held was impressive too as the interrogator in chief I previously mentioned that the moments between Robert and Sophie were my favourite parts in the film, and that is in large part down to him as well. Johanna Gastoff was fine, and Andre Heinecke was like a reincarnated Freisler. He perfectly captured the hysteria and vindictiveness in that weasel of a man. Whilst Fabian Heinrichs didn't have much to work off, but he often gave off an odd, glaky expression on his face that really did leave me wondering whether he was smiling every time I seen him pop up. Now the visuals were impressive for what they were, the large majority of the film was shot indoors and at close range and it did look historically accurate in the main. The costume design and the court scenes in particular were real standouts and it sucked you into the period effectively. The CG and the few cityscape wide shots that popped up were very poor though and noticeably fake. You can forgive this though because this was probably a low budget film and the CG was used sparingly. In the end, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this film from start to finish. It highlighted an astonishing story of bravery, determination and defiance in one of the most dangerous periods in human history that frankly I didn't know about prior to watching this film. I'm sure there were other acts of courage like this in Nazi Germany, but none seem to have had the wide-ranging impact that the young Sophie Shaw and the other White Rose members' sacrifices managed to have. You have to remember that the leaflets they were distributing detailing the horrors of the Holocaust were the very ones that the Allied forces later dropped on Germany in the thousands. The film itself was poignant, highly emotive and it featured a couple of brilliant acting performances and I highly recommend giving it a watch even if you're not remotely interested in the World War II period as a whole. But just bear in mind that it is a foreign language film but don't let this distract you because it is a fantastic watch in the main and I'll be giving this film a 4.5 out of 5. Remember guys if you're enjoying the content we're putting out then do subscribe to our YouTube channel, like comment on and share the videos. You can also find us on iTunes and the Google Play Store at the Movie Burner Podcast and give us a little follow on Facebook and Twitter at Movie Burners. If you fancy a spot of casual reading then all our latest written reviews and the occasional article can be found at MovieBurnerEntertainment.org. Until the next time, goodbye.